How's it going everyone? It is Andre Williams and over here we talk stocks and we focus on one thing. Always protect your profits. And today we're going to be talking about SoFi. I know you guys saw what happened in the after hours. We ended up crushing it on earnings. We see the stock is spiking up, reaching those levels we spoke about yesterday. But you know what? We'll talk about it further in this video. I won't waste any more time. Let's jump into the agenda. If you're new to this channel, I just want to let you know we have timestamps down below inside the description. But if you're a shareholder, or you're thinking about taking a position, I highly suggest you watch this full entire video. So the first thing we're gonna go over is the technical analysis. We're gonna be taking a look at the overall price action. We wanna know support, we wanna know resistance, we wanna know what it looks like in the bearish case scenario and as well as in the bullish case scenario. And then we're gonna go on Fintel taking a look at the recent institutional ownership and short interest information. The reason this is important because it does have an impact on the the way the stock performs. And then we're going to be taking a look at the order flow distribution. We want to know the buying and the selling behavior on the retail side and as well as on the institutional side. And then when all of that is done, we'll be going into the final thoughts and as well as some more details. So let's get to it. So we're going to do a technical analysis for SoFi. Let's see how it performed on the day. So it ended up closing at $11.20, being down 2.18%. On the low, it tested $11.20. And then on the high, testing $11.98. When we take a look at the volume stats on the day, you can see we traded at 95.26 million shares and the average volume over 10 trading days is at 63.014. So we did have above average volume on the day and as you can see what's going down inside of the after hours, we're at $13.40. Now when we take a look at our chart, which is the daily chart, you can see from the RSI down below, it's at 44 4.57 and then when we take a look at our moving averages here on the chart we are below the 200 day the 100 day in the after hours we are above the 50 day and also you can see here we also are above the 21 day EMA but just keep in mind the way how we close on the day we're below that moving average but we want to see that after hours action can actually hold up going into tomorrow but aside from that when we take a look at this chart it has been on a strong uptrend forming some higher lows so having a gap up going into tomorrow Tomorrow, I'd want to see us gap up to at least hold $13. But one thing that we do know, all gaps must get filled. So at some point, it will pull back and fill in this gap so it can come back down here right to $11.99. So that's just one thing to be aware of. There's no need to FOMO in and buy this stock where it's trading at the $13 or even the $14 range. Be patient, the price will come to you. Now, if this run actually continues and it's able to hold this level above the 50-day, then of course, $14 is very doable, but we do know there will be some resistance, there will be some profit taking, so it's going to be very key that we have a lot of volume coming into the stock to push it up even further and maybe potentially get into this next psychological area here right at 15 bucks. So let's see how SoFi performs going into tomorrow. Now we're going to take a look at the short interest information. So we're going to take a look at the recent institutional ownership and short interest information for SoFi. Scrolling down further on the page, green rows indicate new positions while red rows indicate closed positions. So we're going to take a look at the recent filings for March 1st. So we have Artisan Global Discovery Fund investor shares that purchased 142,752 shares. We also have Artisan Midcap Fund institutional shares that purchased just under 2.6 million shares. And then we also have Parkside Financial Bank and Trust that purchased 150 shares. Now, when we scroll up and take a look at the short interest, the off-exchange short volume ratio is at 47.09%. And then for the off-exchange short volume, it is just over 15.78 million shares. Scrolling down further on the page, the short shares availability is at 8.6 million, updated 20 minutes ago. And then for the short ball fee rate being at 0.70%. When we take a look at the history of the short volume, we could see for the close of the 25th, it was at 41.15. And then when we take a look at the close for the 28th being at 47.09. So what this shows us right away, SoFi does have short squeeze potential. Now let's move
move on to the order flow distribution. Now let's take a look at the order flow distribution for SoFi. So we see on the inflow, it's at 167, and then on the outflow, it's at 206. Taking a look at the breakdown on the large, it was 12. On the medium, it was 97.52. And then on the small, it was 57.83. Keep in mind, these numbers are in the millions. Taking a look at the outflow side on the large, it was 10.67. On the medium, it was 137, and then on the small, it was 58.75. Taking a look at the large scale orders in the last five days, you could see for today, March the 1st, it being that inflow of 1.33 million. We also saw this on the 28th with 14.59 million, and we also saw it on the 24th at 8. 0.87 million. So we had two big inflow days on the large scale orders over the past three trading days. So what this actually shows me, did they know something prior to earnings? You know what, let's just kind of move on. So when we take a look at the small scale orders that tends to represent the retail side, we had more selling than we had buying. When we take a look at what happened on the medium, we had more selling than we had buying. But when we take a look at the large it represents whales, institutions, and funds, we had more more buying than we had selling. And then when we take a look at the turnover ratio, it was at 12.75%. So yes, this is up there for a stock like SoFi, but we already know how volatile it is. And part of the reasons being is there were many who are looking forward to earnings just like myself. We ended up getting that earnings beat. So as far as going into tomorrow, it's gonna to be interesting. And I'm gonna be talking about what my thoughts are in the final thoughts. So let's get into it right now. So for my final thoughts for SoFi, before we get started, let's go over our quick Quick overview in regards to their earnings. So we have it here, SoFi Technologies Q4 earnings highlights, record revenue, added members, and bank charter update and guidance. SoFi reported fourth quarter adjusted revenue of 279.88 million, up 54% year over year. The total beat a consensus estimate of 279.29 million. That's what we want to see. The company reported a loss of 15 cents per share in the quarter, beating estimates of two cents. So again, showing that they are being efficient. Adjusted EBITDA was 5 million in the quarter, the company's sixth consecutive positive quarter. That's a good sign. SoFi added 523,000 new members in the quarter and ended 2021 with around 3.5 million total SoFi members, up 87% year over year. The total was a record and came in around 500,000 ahead of the company's original full year goal. For the full fiscal year, SoFi had a revenue of 1.01 billion, up 63% year over year. We hit new highs across our key financial and operating metrics in the fourth quarter, finishing 2021 with record annual results. So as far as my thoughts on earnings overall, I'm excited as a long-term investor. Remember, when it pulled back to the $8.82, I was saying that is a great opportunity to load up on shares if you have high conviction. And now inside of the after hours, seeing it just jumping above $13 going into tomorrow, I would love to see SoFi get to around 14. And we know there's gonna be a strong amount of resistance right at $15. But as far as the technicals are concerned, we have to understand there will be a gap in the chart. So we know it closed the day at $11.98. So going into tomorrow, opening up at $3, we know as far as gaps are concerned, they get filled over 95% of the time. So if you're thinking about taking a long-term investment in SoFi, I would wait for that pullback because it will happen. There is no need to have FOMO or to rush into the play. And for my traders out there, you could capitalize by using options or whether you want to go in with commons. It's all up to what you want to do, but I just want to make sure I'm putting that out there. But for the long term, you guys know how bullish I am on this play. So now that we got the technicals and the price action out of the way, as far as what things are going to be looking like for this year, I'm going to continue to be bullish. We have to understand, and they did talk 
about this in their earnings report about the student loans. We know that it was extended all the way until May. And they did talk about as far as the revenue is concerned, that is not reflected as of yet. And when it does get reflected, the balance sheet looks even healthier. And then to add on top of that, we do know as far as for even the bank charter, when they fully get that approval, again, they've already been given a conditional approval. That's going to help them increase their margins even more. So taking this into consideration, there's a lot to look forward to. And we see as far as for the overall platform, they are growing their customer base. And this is what you want to see from a growth company. And this will be reflected in the stock. So when you see those pullbacks and so forth, again, do your homework, do your due diligence. I do think they do provide opportunities. Also, when we went on Fintel, taking a look at the recent institutional ownership, we could see clearly institutions have been loading up on shares. And taking a look at the short interest information, it does continue to have short squeeze potential. So there's going to be a good amount of traders in this play, and they're going to want to see that price move up and try to get it above 14 and make that push to 15. But do know if you are going to get involved, make sure you know your entry, your exit, you have a strategy, and you have risk management. This is very key because I know as far as for this play, I'm not going to be playing it in and out because again, I'm a long-term investor. I'd rather just add on the dips. And then there's other plays that I look at in regard to seeing some more price movement. So overall for earnings, I'm a happy investor. And when those dips do occur, I will be taking advantage of it. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video and we'll be talking real soon.